Meta Chess. Take everything you know about chess and put it on another game of chess. Meta Chess. How does it work? The little chess controls the big ones like awesome riding mechs to destroy the enemy. Or they can jump to other pieces, even enemy pieces, and control them to win in Meta Chess. Now in awesome multicolor, thanks to the Flash Forge Creator Max 2. Or other multi-material and multicolor 3 printing options. Meta Chess. Chess has never been this awesome. And it still isn't, because it is chess, which is a lot of this sort of thing. Uh, the bishop can't jump, cat. Right. Oh, come on, nerds. Make a move. I'm getting old watching you. Oh, uh, hey. Uh, voiceover side gig. Uh, let's just, uh... <clears throat> the Flash Forge Creator Max 2. Now, you will remember that I reviewed the Flash Forge Creator Max 1 a little while ago, and I was fairly impressed about it. But there were a couple of small things that I wished were better about it. One of which was that I wished that it was an IDEX machine. Well, it turns out that Flash Forge heard my pleas, and the Max 2 is an IDEX machine. This is the point where I squee like a little girl. Oh my goodness, they heard me! I can't believe it! I'm so excited! This is the best day of my life! And Ken Pai noticed me! And this is great! Oh, wow! <sighs> now, the Flash Forge Creator Max 2 is an amazing machine. I would describe this as almost over-engineered. It's so reliable. It's so fantastic that during the time that I was testing prints on this machine, half the time, I just hit go and then run off to work and not even check to make sure the first layer was good. Because once you leveled the bed, it never moved. And the prints came out reliably great. That is partially because it's got some amazing features, a super rigid body. It actually... Over the Max 1, I think this one has optical end stops, which is great. Plus, just like the Max, it's direct drive. Plus, it's enclosed. It's got this nice enclosure to it that keeps it away from the elements, which is great because it's been a little bit cold in the Maker Garage lately, but this machine doesn't even care about it. The heated build plate heats the chamber up enough, and I have not had prints fail despite not being in an ideal printing circumstance. Editing desk Joe just jumping in here real fast. I forgot when I was recording the review to mention the fact that the Creator Max 2 comes with a removable build plate that the Creator Max 1 doesn't have. And later on, when we're talking about the price differential between these two machines, I think it should be mentioned that a removable build plate is like a hundred dollar upgrade if you're buying it separately so you know throw that into your calculations now I will say that the removable build plate on the Crater Max 2 was optional and I don't know anybody who would not take that option like if if you feel that a fixed build plate is better than a removable build plate that's really gonna strain our friendship here it was also odd, though, because once I did the upgrade, once I swapped out the build plate for removable build plate, it was slightly taller than the non-removable. And even when I tightened all of the screws down to bring that plate down as far as possible, it was still going too high and the nozzle was crashing into it. And I kind of had to fix it with a popsicle stick and some duct tape to make it so it triggers the Z end stop just just a popsicle sticks with sooner uh, which which worked fine and doesn't bother me doing that just for such a well engineered machine having to put popsicle sticks in to make it work seemed a bit odd to me and I don't know if Flash Forge is going to address that in future versions and it was just because I got a pre-release version so that I could tell you guys about it 
But if not, I mean, I'm not bothered by it. I, I, I still think that it's great. It works fine. I'm probably going to have duct tape in this thing for years to come. Just that little piece in there because it works and it works great. So back to the review. I started by doing a print off the SD card, which was this little dual color Moai head. And this one they printed with a ooze layer on the outside and a raft, neither of which technically should have been necessary. I suppose the raft was important for a test print because if the user hasn't leveled the bed well enough, but why did it have the ooze shield on it? I mean, don't get me wrong, peeling off the ooze shield is super satisfying. It's like cracking the cover on a creme brulee, but it shouldn't have been necessary because since an idex moves that nozzle out of the way, you're not really wiping off the nozzle on anything. So I started to do some of my own test prints. Now I started with some basic test prints, which for me are print -a block Now I was able to print two colors at once by taking advantage of this printer's ability to print in mirror mode, where both of the heads space themselves out and do the print at the same time. And I gotta tell you, it's super satisfying to watch that work. And these printer blocks turned out to be some of the best that I've ever done. After this video, this machine is probably going to become a print -a block factory. Not only do they snap together and pull apart well, which is what printer blocks are designed to do, but they are measurably accurate. I took my calipers to these things and perfection in every direction. I then printed one of my filament stress tests that I made a while ago, and this is designed to see how it handles supports. Now, Flashforge has their own slicer called Flashprint, and I, I really, I kind of wanted to see how it handled a fully supported spherical object. That's what this was designed for, and ooh, it turned out really good. In fact, it turned out so nice, I printed it twice. This time printing it in mirror mode, because again, I could, why not? I printed a couple of my galaxy dice, and again, I printed them in mirror mode because it's just so much fun to do it. You know, it's super satisfying to be able to have two dice that you can pull off the build plate at the same time for the cost of just printing one. I revisited an old project that I did, Meta Chess, which in the past, it was a single color version, and that worked, but boy, the ability to do this with dual color really enabled me to go to town on some of these designs and just have a lot of fun. Plus, Meta Chess is a game where you're playing chess on chess, so being able to make the board on top of each of the pieces dual colored was kind of the goal here. Everything else, well... That was just gravy. And lastly, I've been working on a interesting project that I'll get to show you guys later, but it involved me switching to Pet G. And of course, this machine handles Pet G without any problems whatsoever. But, uh, you know, I've actually got some more prints to do for this one. So maybe for the rest of the video, I'll actually uh, turn on the printer. And let's actually start a print. Print, print, fork and screw. Print. People have complained in the past that they want to see the printer running to get a sense for how noisy it is. And can you hear this? There is honestly a little bit of background noise from the fan, but it's really quiet. And once you hear it start going, it's not the most silent 3D printer ever, but it is quiet enough. I'm, I'm, I, I really am confident that I'll be able to do this review once this printer starts kicking into gear and printing, but it's heating up now. So while that's warming up and getting ready to go, let's talk about the things about this printer that, uh, let's be honest, every rose has its thorns, and there are a couple of things that I could talk about. To start with, it does, like every other FlashForge Creator machine, have this large filament spool holder, which works great for the filament that they'll sell you, but if you want to use other filament, it might be too big. So I recommend, while you've still got their first couple of spools, go and download the 
filament spool holder for FlashForge Creator, print a couple of these out and replace the factory spool holders with 3D printed spool holders. On the Creator Max, I complained that the power switch was inconveniently placed on the opposite side of where the power is coming in and so you've got to reach long fingers around the power cord in order to turn it off and on. It seems to me like a trivial thing to just you know flip that around and again I might crack it open and do that myself but guys if, if you're listening to me please just turn that power switch over. But there is one other thing about this printer that for me I just can't ignore. The FlashForge Adventurer 3 has Bar none, the best Wi-Fi transfer that I have ever seen on a 3D printer, and it is only getting better. They recently updated their slicer so that it will scan your local network for any 3D printer that is on the local network and automatically connect to it. Here that print is starting up, and... I mean, that's not too bad, and, and that's the sound of stepper motors moving, you know? It's just that little sing-song. Ah, it's great. Plus, they also made it so that you don't have to save the file to your desktop or something before transferring it over. They handle that temporary directory hiding it stuff, which makes things so... It's so flawless. It's so simple that I will never take the FlashForge Adventure 3 out of the hallowed place of sitting in my house because of how easy its Wi-Fi is. It has earned a permanent space there. The FlashForge Creator Max 1 had a lesser version of this Wi-Fi. It was mostly okay, but it was kind of weird that you couldn't do the Wi-Fi and be able to print through the SD card. It had to be one or the other. Turn on the Wi-Fi, SD card was completely disabled. But that wasn't bad, it was just kind of weird. However, on the Max 2, for some reason, FlashForge decided that the Max 2 doesn't need to have Wi-Fi. In fact, they've decided that they're not doing Wi-Fi anymore at all. And I don't like that. Because, first of all, they got it so right with the Adventurer 3, all they have to do is copy over what they did to the other machines and I'd be perfectly happy. So why isn't it here? So we've got a machine that took the two heads and split them apart, added some amazing functionality, and increased the engineering on it with optical end stops and, and everything else. It's great but then it loses the Wi-Fi. With that in mind, if somebody were to come to me and say, I don't get it, this, this, the economics of this don't make sense to me, why would I want to do that? I would have to go, yeah, I, I guess I could see that. But having this machine, using this machine, let me put it to you this way. I just put in an order for a $200 spool of filament, and it wasn't even a full kilogram. Why would I pay $200 for this filament? Well, because it promises that it's super conductive, that it will actually work for inlaying circuits into your 3D prints. And the thing is, I didn't trust the Max 1 to do this. Sure, it probably could have, but locking those two heads together and you know, the fact that you gotta balance them just a little bit made me leery of doing this. But this machine? This machine has given me the confidence to try the weird stuff. Which is a line that I hope is never taken out of context and used against me. And I guess that's sort of the idea of who I'd recommend this machine for. If you want to experiment with 3D printing, if you want to push the boundaries this machine is definitely the machine to do it with. Before we go, check out this cool project on the What You Make In channel on my Discord. Why don't you stop by and check out what other cool projects are there. And hey, if you share something you've done, maybe you'll see it in a future video too. Thank you very much for watching. Hey, if I mentioned anything in this video, you'll find a link to it in the cards and you should check that out. 
Did you know that I'm social? I've got links to all the socials and you should stop by and say hi. I really kind of enjoy it when that happens. Big thanks go out to my direct backers. And if you want to know more about how you can become that, there'll be a link right here that you can check out. And as always, I want to remind you safety first because I care about you and I'll see you next time. Oh, that's interesting. Classic one there. Test stress. <laughs> Just. <laughs> we can do this, Joe.